The whole idea of the third DLC to me was uh, it cannot be the continuation of the story. It's not going to be more of the same. So we needed to end with the boom. We needed to end with something special. Raymond as a character is super cool when you play with him. It's a very deep, uh, intense experience. It was really an honor to have Raymond in uh, our production. He offered us uh, the opportunity to go far beyond what we could achieve. Le fait de revoir Raymond après toutes ces années, vraiment déclenché une profusion d'idées. He will of course bring freshness to players, but also he brings freshness to us, to the devs. This was a heartwarming really. I feel so grateful. It's quite magical. C'est transcendental. It's just fun. <laughs> so, let the show begin. When uh, I became a game designer for Ubisoft, uh, Rayman was the first game I ever worked on, and it was Rayman Game Boy Color. I loved the game because I was uh, falling in love with it before as a video game journalist. But as a developer then uh, working in Ubisoft, uh, it's where I learned everything about not playing platform games, but about making platform games. So it's part of my DNA. It's part of uh, who I am. I needed my boy back. When I decided to integrate Rayman in the third DLC, the news started to spread among the team. And I must say that amongst the concept artists, there were few people going crazy with just the opportunity, the possibility that, that, that this was a true outcome, like working on a Rayman game. Envisioning my work on Rayman as an animator was uh, challenging, exciting, also intimidating at first. I knew that I wanted to respect his legacy, to have him uh, perform in a way that felt uh, believable and truthful to the character. Also, I wanted to convey the same emotions and feelings I had when I was playing those games at a younger age. When I started to work on Rayman Animation, I definitely wanted to convey his expressiveness. And if you play his games, you know how big the range of emotions he display can be. And I love his expressiveness. So we worked closely with the art and technology department in order to craft specific expressions to achieve this. Ah. For regarding cinematics, we wanted his face to be really expressive. So we paid a lot of attention and extra care to check how the eyebrows and eyelids behave. So when one moves, the other one should react, the eye socket as well. So the whole face should feel connected, organic and believable. And we actually ended up developing a new face system for him that allowed us to reach a degree of expressiveness that was not achievable before. Yes! When we start thinking about having Rayman, I really want to create something unique, different from all we did in the main game and the other DLCs. We really want to have a specific taste, a specific flavor. We really want uh, uh, to create the best setting to make him shine. And so we decided to uh, put together, close to Rayman, uh, two of the most characteristic rabbit heroes we ever created, which are Rabbit Peach and Rabbit Mario. So it's putting together again the rabbits and Rayman in a new way. In terms of uh, storytelling, in terms of humor, those two are creating uh, a perfect duo to have uh, an incredible exchange of uh, situation and dialogue uh, to our story. They are compensating each other. So we have a diva, we have someone that is mimicking Mario, and then we have uh, a real uh, hero, which is Rem. <laughs> For many gamers around the world, it's already settled that Raymond and the rabbits don't go along well together. So, why not to try to change this? The DLC for us was the chance to try and do this. I think that uh, the settings of this DLC probably is the most extravagant of all. 
Yes, still we are in the same universe, we are in the same story, but the place the heroes are exploring this time is a kind of TV set, a TV network, a place full of uh, little TV shows. We want to show in our way what is behind uh, the camera. We've chosen three of the most classic movie sets, Purates, Medieval and Western. We defined three different art directions dedicated for each one of them. And beyond that, we tapped a lot into the Raymond world, spreading a lot of quotes and citation easter eggs a little bit everywhere. The owner of this TV network is uh, The Phantom. The Phantom is a very well-known character. He was a boss in the third world of the uh, first Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. It was memorable because uh, he sang during the battles. But now we will meet him under a very different light. Come back! <laughs> Were you ever a thing, Rayman? It all started with the idea of giving the Phantom his own theater with a huge and gigantic TV and movie studio that was, uh, in a sense, a kind of his exclusive kingdom. And uh, there is a big issue because this uh, network is going very bad, the ratings are terrible. He's acting as a warden and also as a creative director of all the programs that are being uh, aired and things are not going uh, super well, so maybe he's not a good creative director. Le personnage de Rayman, ça a apporté deux réflexions en audio euh, tout de suite. La première, elle est très terre à terre, c'est qui allait prêter sa voix à Rayman Et le choix le plus naturel, c'était David Gassman, qui a donc prêté sa voix à Rayman sur euh, Rayman 2 et Rayman 3, et euh, qui a une valeur euh, un peu historique par rapport à la voix. More rabbits et la deuxième et plus importante réflexion, c'était autour de la musique, de toute l'identité musicale de Rayman. Et pour moi, c'est complètement indissociable de Christophe. C'était complètement indispensable d'avoir ta patte pour porter Rayman dans l'univers de Mario Rabbids. J'ai repris le flambeau pour faire Rayman Origins, la Rayman Legend. Je crois que chaque fois, il y a quand même des choses qui sont un peu comme la palette d'un peintre, toujours associées à ce personnage. L'univers de Rayman, c'est une sorte de sac à dos rempli de ukulélé, de guimbardes, de kazoo, de sifflets. Et chaque fois, bah, j'amène tout ce sac à dos que j'enrichis parfois avec un orchestre symphonique, ça peut, ça peut arriver. J'avais trois mondes à mettre en musique. Le monde médiéval, le western et Kraken, qui est un monstre marin. Et chaque fois, j'ai essayé de fabriquer, juste avec mon sac à dos, les pipeaux et tout ça, une nouvelle aventure de Rayman. Et on a dans ce DLC un, une ambiance, un univers qui est quand même assez différent de celle du main game. Et il fallait que la musique suive ça, que la musique apporte ce côté un peu plus humoristique, un peu plus aéré, et ce côté cinématographique aussi. Ce qu'on veut, c'est proposer quelque chose de nouveau, de vraiment frais, par rapport à ce que les joueuses et les joueurs ont vu dans le main game. Et quelque chose d'assez amusant quand même sur ce DLC-là, c'est que les premières musiques du jeu sont composées par Grant Kirko, mais avec une base percussive enregistrée par Christophe. Et euh, c'est le lien un petit peu entre le jeu principal, donc l'identité de Grant, qui amène petit à petit les couleurs de Christophe vers cette espèce d'emprunt à l'univers de Rayman dans le monde de Mario plus Rabbids. I feel like the Rayman games have got that kind of quirkiness. I just tried to get some of that into the music. I listened to Christophe's music that he wrote for the DLC, which is like it's got that classic Rayman quirkiness to it. So I was trying to incorporate some of his kind of quirkiness into the stuff that I wrote for the DLC, you know, to kind of make it link together. I feel like it turned out great, so uh, you have to let me know when you hear it. So even though some of the music's quite different than the DLCs, um, I feel like it's got that theme. I feel like that does create a link in itself. Et je pense que vos deux styles se marient très bien là-dessus.
quand on est dans le western, bien évidemment, tout ce qui m'a plu, c'était le fait qu'il y ait ces planches de décor avec les madriers qui tenaient les façades. Et ça fait partie du décor. On voit la fabrication d'une scène de, de cinéma. Comment j'aborde ça bah, Le western, c'est plein de codes. Le médiéval, c'est plein de codes. Mais C'est intéressant ce que tu dis parce que je trouve qu'il y a le bon équilibre euh, entre... Le côté premier degré, on arrive sur un décor de cinéma et en quelques mesures, c'est évocateur. On sait qu'on est dans le western. Et petit à petit, on va vers la mise en abîme, on va vers le décor en carton, on va vers le côté plus fun, le côté plus Rayman. Et au final, ça fait des morceaux euh, qui sont une, une boucle, mais qui finalement, qu'on sent pas parce que ça raconte quelque chose. Vraiment. On a euh, une espèce de parcours <rire> devant et derrière la caméra, comme dans le jeu finalement. Rabbits et Rayman, basically think they are invited here to become stars of the screen. But something is not like they think it is, and they will have many surprises along uh, their adventure, and they will be forced to fight, and to fight together. If we, uh, philosophically speaking, uh, go back to the past, and we see how the rabbits are born in a Rayman game, uh, having the rabbits inviting uh, Rayman back uh, in a DLC, to me, it was uh, absolutely important. It gave me the possibility to have uh, the surprise of those characters clashing and meeting together once again in their own adventure, which allowed me also to explore, along with the team, a new set of experiences for exploration and combat. Yeah, Raymond was really special on level design side because he has a huge uh, mobility. He can take uh, lamb rings, the other heroes can't. He can basically go uh, very far in the battlefield. Thanks to Raymond in exploration, we have two new abilities, the spinning fist and also the helicopter. The helicopter allows us to add a new ingredient in exploration. It's a team jump, the trampoline. Thanks to this trampoline, on the level design side, we can create several floors and we can create also more vertical level compared to the main game. I was in charge of the medieval movie set and I wanted to have like an epic uh, castle fight uh, where you first uh, bombard the castle to get inside to then uh, face the dragon. I gave each of the heroes like a role. For Raymond, he is the pathfinder because he is opening different paths for the heroes so the heroes can proceed. So it's really like a teamwork uh, between them. Rabbit Peach is the fire starter. <laughs> because she has a long-range weapon and she can make uh, explosive barrels explode uh, without the heroes being inside it. And then you have uh, Rabbit Mario. For him, like these kind of pipes that Raymond opens are very important because he has to get close to the enemies thanks to his short range, but he does like a huge damage output. I believe that uh, all their ability are also leveraging the ability of the others too plus Rayman, which is a kind of catalyzer because his power of transforming himself with the costume, it's really tactical because he can change the outcome of the battle and helping the other two teammates in a way that no one else is able to. He has like his default costume, and then you can choose between the rocket costume and the vortex costume. The rocket costume uh, grants player immunity to super effects, so it can be used very strategically. Also, uh, he can summon a rocket. <laughs> and that rocket, you can uh, go around the battlefield uh, super free. Of course, you can upgrade it, and it can have like fire explosions and everything, so the rocket costume is cool. And then you have the uh, vortex costume, which is like, like um, bouncing the, <laughs> the enemy, so you can uh, either shoot at enemies, you have little turrets that uh, react to enemies, so you have like these two costumes and then you also have the default one, uh, which is like a basic attack, I would say. With the ability of focus our effort on three characters and not in nine characters, we were really able to push what players could do in the battlegrounds beyond their uh, limits. This gave us, uh, in terms of uh, level designer and game designer, the possibility to tailor the experience uh, specifically for the powers and abilities of our uh, free heroes. I believe this DLC is going to be the best one, and not just because there is Raymond, but it's also because the maturity level of the team reached the top, 
I think of a climax of passion, dedication, and the huge work done by the whole team. I think it's the, the pinnacle of the whole Mario Plus Rabbids experience in terms of fun and over the top. Here, we really went crazy. People and players that love the past Rayman games would be super happy of what we did. It's the last party. Let's enjoy it together. Okay. <laughs> Having been able to work on the DLC Rayman, it's been a great honor to do that. I'm the biggest Rayman fan. For me, it's incredible to have been part of this project. It's Rayman, I mean. It uh, was magical to see our drawings come to life. It was literally a dream come true for a cartoonist. He gave me that superhero vibe that we really appreciated. I mean, look at him. It's awesome. So really glad to be able to work on Rayman and bring a piece of myself into it. It was poured with love and passion. And I hope you will like it as I liked working on it. I hope you enjoy our game. So thank you very much to you all. Hope you enjoy. Thank you very much. Ciao! Ciao.